They're traveling all over the world, taking their time and giving their time, traveling all over the world to let people know about their heritage. And we're losing our heritage, and we're going to lose it. We know this. We found Tangier as part of the research, but initially it came out of the research as this enormous environmental challenge. There's some areas along Tangier we were losing 25 to 30 feet of shoreline each year. These people would be the first refugees to climate change and the consequence of sea level rising. And uh, that's how we initially saw why we would come to capture that story of a drowning community. This has been going on forever, but we're just running out of land to give up now. And uh, like I tell folks, when it gets to your doorstep, you pay more attention to it. So we're, we're, we're really running out of time and land, and we, we really need to get some protection for the island. As one of the first communities in the United States to suffer the consequences of a combination of environmental issues including rising sea levels and erosion, Tangier Island, Virginia was an imperative stop for the crew of Hokulea to learn about the plight of these fellow islanders. I'm going to ask you guys a bunch of questions about your life on your island. and Having the Hokulea here and the, and the crew, I had read some about the vessel and, and, the, and the voyages that she had made. And, uh, but to actually have her to come into Tangier as part of their world voyage, it's, man, it's, it's just unbelievable that, that they, they made us a part of their voyage and that they came into our harbor and that I actually got to sail on the vessel. It was good. I wouldn't take it out of my life like this. I told my wife, ready to go home now, ready to go home. This is a... This is a good thing in my life. And it was a scary thought, too, to go out there. I got a picture of your ancestors on that boat. They knew the Lord, too. You better believe they did. They had somebody on their side. They do. To have them on the deck of their canoe and then to have the kinds of conversations that we have with them, these are ocean people. Uh, and they and they pride themselves on that. And, uh, you know, they don't call themselves refugees. E even though on the outside there's this suggestion that they're going to be the first refugees to climate change in the United States, they're not willing to be lowered to that kind of uh, definition and that kind of standard. Tangier's a, a unique place. It's uh... It's a very close-knit community. The people are close together, they help each other. And on Tangier, everybody knows everybody else. And we've been fishermen and crabbers for, you know, a couple hundred years now. And uh, it's, it's, a very, it's a very nice place to grow up. It's a nice place for kids. It's a safe, safe place. And being a fisherman or crabber, it can be a hard way of life sometimes. But it, like any job, it has its ups and downs, but it's, uh, all in all, it, it's very nice. I enjoy it. When a female is going to shed for its last time, it will get pink and blue colored here. Yeah, that has got more red in it. Yeah, that has got more red. Yep. I've always thought life on Tangier was a good life. I mean, uh, the heritage that we've got, and the, the love that we have for each other, Being with them and talking to them, they are committed to their home, they're committed to their place, they're committed to, to their children. I mean, they, they are very family oriented. The community of Tangier is actively working with the federal government and the Army Corps of Engineers 
to look at options that will prevent further loss of land on Tangier Island. These are hard working people and they're going to find a solution. Their great grandparents did it, their grandparents did it, their parents did it, and they're going to do it. This place, Tangier, is a lot like Hawaii. It's been very powerful being in the place and with the people to, to help us rethink what's really, what's really important. It's been a place where I come to be very thoughtful about when I go home, you know, what am I going to do? Met some people just like me. Yeah, or you've got the same heart that I got. And that's good. I've made friends, new friends that I'll never forget. And you've had an impact not only on me, but in the whole community. Uh, different citizens have been talking to me and about the, the boat, your boy, <coughs> and, and the people that you're a, a caring, humble people. And uh, you, you've made a big impact on them. So I thank you. That's the power of the canoe and voyaging and the magic of the worldwide voyage is that you end up in places with people and you make connections that you could never imagine until you go, until you go.